This is Mrs. O'Neill for AP Chemistry, Chapter 7, Section 6, Metals, Nonmetals, and Metalloids. By the end of the section, you'll be able to understand the physical and chemical properties of metals and how they are different from nonmetals. Determine that these properties come from the characteristic of ionization energy, and of course, be able to understand that uh, metalloids are elements that have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Again, pause the video, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So metallic characteristic, this should you be able to get right away, that you go down a group, the metallic character is going to increase, and across the period, it decreases. So let's look here. So if we go from left to right across the periodic table, we go from metals to metalloids to nonmetals. So that trend should make sense. So we're going from left to right across a period, we actually decrease in metallic characteristic. Now, if you look on the left-hand side, hmm, from lithium to sodium to potassium, that's hard to see that the trend increases in metallic characteristic because hmm, they're all metals anyways. So let's look on this side. Let's look at something like the nitrogen group. Nitrogen is definitely a nonmetal. Phosphorus is definitely a nonmetal. And then here's our line. So arsenic is going to be a metalloid. Uh, antimony is sometimes a metalloid. And then bismuth is a metal. So we're going from a nonmetal to a metalloid to a metal. So there you can then understand how the metallic characteristic is going to increase as you go down a group. So there are the characteristics of both metals and nonmetals. Um, most of them you already should know. Uh, some, however, you need to make sure that you pay close attention to, like a metallic oxide. So let's say sodium oxide or lithium oxide. If we add that to metal, uh, to water, I'm sorry, if we add that to water, we're going to make a base. However, if we take something like phosphorus oxide or um, nitrogen oxide and we add water to it, we're going to make an acid. So keep those uh, two reactions in the back of your head there. And of course, a metalloid is uh, a particular element that has both properties of metals and nonmetals, or is going to act one way more than the other, depending on the situation. So if we look at pH trends, and this is going to be a little bit more important when we get into acids and bases, but going back to that, those reactions, the metallic oxide makes a base. Well, look at this. Here's your base, base strength is on this side. So as we get closer to the metals, as we get closer to the metals, we make more of a base. And increasing an in acid strength, if we go this way, as we're increasing um, a more non-metallic characteristics, we're going to make an acid. So that's something to think about. Uh, and again, those reactions are going to be more important later, but this is going to be the trend where uh, the more base, uh, let me say here, the more non-metallic you are, the more acidic you'll be. And again, it's because of that uh, reaction that I just showed you and made sure that you want uh, to tell you that you need to understand it. And um, metals, metals tend to make more uh, base solutions. So metallic oxide, again, more, more metallic uh, characteristic you are, uh, the more basic uh, pH level you will be. Okay, see you in class.